2024 Republican presidential candidate, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott joins me. Nice to see you again, sir. Thank you, Greta. It's good to be back with you. Okay, things are rather complicated between the United States and Israel yes. because President Biden and uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu apparently don't see eye to eye, and Benjamin Netanyahu has not yet been invited to the White House, which is unusual. Yes. And, of course, the president says, well, I'm inviting the president of Israel, but that's a ceremonial role, but not the exactly. prime minister. So what's going on? Well, I mean, let's look a little deeper into, under the surface here. Here's what we know. President Biden has restarted negotiations with Iran. Slap in the face. His negotiations suggest that, as opposed to having a written agreement, that of course we would disagree with the JCPOA. The last time we saw a written agreement from a pre pre uh, American president was. It almost be expired underbought. by now, by the exactly, way. Exactly, exactly. But what we've seen is that these new negotiations suggest that all Iran has to do is say they're doing X, and we say you can have more access to selling your oil on the open market. That's a bad decision. So it's a slap in the face to Israel. In addition to that, Having a conversation about unilaterally withdrawing from uh, the ability to negotiate and work with Israel on other really important topics is another slap in the face. So when you combine those two together, we understand why the relationship is so weak with Israel. Well, you know, I was just there last week, and it's an extremely dangerous neighborhood um, for Israel to be in. They were hated on all sides, and you've got the fact that uh, um, Iran, um, I mean, Iran has missiles that say death to Israel, and you've got these Hezbollah tunnels from Lebanon where the terrorists com can come in, now closed off, I should add. But it seems that, you know, we're in a, the, the no discussion with yes. one of our oldest allies, I mean, you can disagree, but the snubbing of it at such a fragile time for Israel is, is what's under, uh, which I don't understand. Well, it's one of the things that m many of our allies probably do not understand is what does it mean when America says we are your ally? What we would say under President Scott is we will stand shoulder to shoulder with our allies. We will be loyal to our allies and lethal to our adversaries. That is a message that has been lost in this administration. Whether you look at the terrible withdrawal from Afghanistan with 13 American soldiers losing their lives, you look at the situation where we were led into helping Ukraine by the Germans, and now you th think about the strength of President Xi? No, it's the weakness of President Biden that is very concerning as it relates to the existential threats that we see against our nation. All right, well, I just did the uh, same with um, Admiral Kirby from the White House and Chairman McCall, House Foreign Affairs, and I asked them both repeatedly, and I'm a little bit stuck on this, the cluster munitions, because they are banned by 122 countries. Yes. Um, our allies aren't in favor of them, and we are now sending these. We have them stockpiled. You know, we're one of the three, we're, Russia, Ukraine, and the United States have, have not signed the ban. Uh, if, would a President Tim Scott be sending those to Ukraine right now? Under my administration, we wouldn't have to have that conversation. Because well, we would but, have, but, but you're going to come in the middle of a war, probably, absolutely. if you're president. Well, those, those ammunitions will already be in Ukraine's hands. So the question is, how do we prevent that from happening again? The way you do that is by making sure that you build up your defense industry to make things again in America. We need to have an industrial revolution at home where we have high-tech manufacturing jobs, six-figure incomes, making the things that keep Americans safe specifically the weaponry that we need here at home and that we can supply to our Western allies. If we had that now, we would not be talking about cluster ammunition at all. It is the failure of this administration to count how much do we have, how many do we need, and frankly, why would you broadcast to the world that you are running low on anything? That is just a dereliction of duty that we've seen time and time again from this president. Would you talk to President Putin now? Listen, I think the only way to have a conversation with President Putin is if he starts withdrawing his troops from Ukraine would be the first uh, litmus test or the red line that we would not cross, not having conversations with a dictator that is actually in the middle of a genocide. Not going to happen in my administration. If they want to have a conversation, they're going to withdraw their troops, frankly, from Ukraine and or face the reality that they're losing territory and losing the war, from my perspective. Um, January uh, 2025, if you are President of the United States, first day um, in office, um, presidents historically will sign executive orders. Yes. I mean, like, what, what is, you know, what's the driving thing that, you, like, if you thought, on day, this is what I like to do day one? Restarting the XL Keystone Pipeline would be my first step. The second is to create certainty and predictability in our regulatory state so that we get back to uh, providing energy from our country. I would say to the American people in my administration, we're going to have a clear understanding of what is America's vital national interest and what does energy security mean to us. It means 
national security. They are synonymous. In addition to that, we would have a serious conversation about rescinding in the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, all of the climate disclosure rules that is reducing the return on investment for our seniors who are living on fixed incomes. We would make sure they had that 2% increase or $240 billion additional dollars coming back to their retirement accounts by eliminating ESG, therefore, and then DEI in and, and education. We, stop, we would stop the process of indoctrinating our kids. We would start educating our kids. We'd go back to teaching American history and all of its ugliness, but all of its brilliance as well. The American people deserve a nation and an education system where we believe in the future of this country He's, because we understand the past. All right. I asked you, obviously asked you about executive orders, important function um, in our government, but they also have been used as a tool to get things done because it's such a log jam in Congress. It's so, it's so deeply divided, much reflecting, mirroring what's on, mirroring what is in the, in the country. Um, you're, you come from the legislative branch, or I you're did. in the legislative branch. Yes. Do you see uh, a Tim Scott, admin, a Senator Tim Scott, President Tim Scott administration as being able to sort of roll back the, the massive use of executive orders and sort of return the powers to sort of a legislative, uh, uh, contemplative uh, branch of the government? Absolutely, for, for a very important reason, number one. It means it stays. Well, the rule it's not doesn't flip over for the yeah. next president. Well, 100 percent agree with that part. But here's a, a very important point. With my administration, we will also have a, re a Republican revolution where we win majorities not only in the House, we'll increase our majorities in the House, and we will, we will take back the majority in the Senate. And in that position, we will have the ability to get things done for the American people. We'll, instead of majoring in minor issues, we'll actually major in major issues. We'll tackle this economy by turning the spigot off. As opposed to having 16% inflation that's down to 3% today, which really means still 50% higher than we want it to be, we would have high employment where we'd remain with low uh, inflation. And we do that by creating millions of jobs in the energy sector, the tech sector, and the high-tech manufacturing. All right, we see you have a, rev a Republican revolution. I think the Democrats watching may think that you're trying to roll them. In the, you would listen to Democrats in your administration? Well, listen, <laughs> I, I have lots of clear-eyed, clear-minded Republicans and conservatives, and frankly, independents who understand that America is the city on the hill. We're never ever going to apologize for being Americans. We're going to always be proud to be Americans. We're going to have more confidence in the American people than we do the government. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott and